Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. And I'm grateful to you and the Speaker's Office for helping me secure this debate on the first day back. This is a debate which is of vital importance to my constituents in St Albans and indeed in many neighbouring and nearby constituencies. Madam Deputy Speaker, in 2014, the then Secretary of State for Communities and Local Government decided that a hugely damaging strategic rail freight interchange should be built on the site of the former Radler Aerodrome next to the small, close-knit community of Park Street in my constituency. If it goes ahead, what this means is that 3.5 million square metres of greenbelt, the size of 490 football pitches, will be converted into a massive rail and lorry park, with warehouses, lorries, container storages, HGV parking and so on. It will bring thousands of heavy goods vehicles per day and bring huge disruption to the surrounding roads and commuter rail links. Whilst that decision was made in 2014, it has suddenly been thrown back into the limelight because our local council is now being held hostage by this government's planning system. In effect, the council has been told by planning inspectors to drop its opposition to the monstrosity of a freight terminal or Whitehall will take away its powers to decide where to build homes. And this is no choice at all. A freight terminal in this location has always been a bad idea. But there are also new and compelling reasons why it should be reviewed and why the plans for a freight terminal should be scrapped. Let's start with what the Government has told the people of St Albans so far. First, the Government says that it wants to protect the Greenbelt. Great. But almost all of St Albans District is designated Greenbelt. Second, the Government also says that St Albans District Council needs to build more than 14,000 additional homes in the next 16 years. That's more than 900 homes per year. Third, as well as accommodating almost 15,000 homes on the green belt, the Government also wants to build this massive freight interchange, the size of 490 football pitches, on the green belt. So here's the rub. It is simply not possible to meet the Government's housing targets, accept a freight interchange and protect the green belt. It is just not possible. Let's start with the green belt. As I said, most of St Albans District is greenbelt. Every new strategic site identified, identified for new development has to be evaluated to ensure it does the least damage to the greenbelt. Initially, a decade ago, the Conservative Secretary of State for Communities and Local Government said that the terminal didn't fit with the development plan in the area. He said it was inappropriate to build a freight interchange in the greenbelt, and on behalf of the Conservative Government, he said the green belt would be safe in our hands. He even highlighted the likely harm it would cause to the landscape and ecology. But after controversial lobbying of the department by the developer, which was a subject of a complaint to the cabinet secretary by my predecessor, and despite his own objections, he went ahead and in 2014 approved the freight terminal anyway, even while admitting the violation of the green belt in his official decision. In that decision, he said, this proposal will have a substantial impact on the openness of the Greenbelt. It will result in significant encroachment into the countryside. It will con contribute to urban sprawl and it will cause some harm to the setting of St Albans. Just a month ago, the government published its white paper planning for the future and reiter reiterated its commitment to protecting the Greenbelt. So my first question to the government tonight is in the light of the government's white paper, Planning for the Future, which commits to protecting the Green Belt, is it still government policy to sacrifice 490 football pitches of Green Belt for a monster lorry and rail park on this site? The government changed course in 2014, and it can and must change course again. Let us turn to the local plan. The local plan was approved by the Council on a cross-party basis in 2018 under the former Conservative administration. That administration submitted a local plan that had suggested building 2,300 homes on this site instead of a rail freight. The argument was that the frail terminal, uh, rail freight terminal could perhaps be stopped if we tried to build some homes there instead. 
but the plan was suspended in January this year by government inspectors. The inspectors have told the new Liberal Democrat administration that this site must be withdrawn for housing or the council will lose its ability to decide where to build any homes at all. If the council is prevented from keeping the site as greenbelt and it's prevented from exploring the potential to build there, then the government must revise the housing targets down or accept that it is on their watch that even more greenbelt will have to be sacrificed to meet the government's housing targets. So my second question to the government this evening is does the government accept that it is unacceptable, an unacceptable state of affairs that under the current planning regime, the planning inspector can, indeed may have no other choice but to threaten to take away a local council's power to de determine where housing should be built unless they stop fighting a government-imposed freight terminal in one spot. And then there's the disruption to rail commuters. Thousands of St Albans residents are Thameslink commuters, and we have faced years of disruption. Most acutely, in 2018, when the botched introduction of a new rail timetable caused misery for thousands of daily commuters for months. Residents are rightly concerned about the capacity and the ability of the Midland Main Line to accommodate the proposed long and heavy freight liner trains. How will they do that without adversely affecting the now mostly reliable operation of the passenger timetables of both Thameslink and East Midlands train services? And then there's the rail infrastructure itself. The infrastructure work needed for this freight terminal is huge. Network Rail will need to dig deep into the ground to enlarge the height of the tunnels, for example at Elstree and also near Kentish Town, and they will need to build a whole new underpass that comes off a spur on the down slow line into London, used by commuters, so as to access the depot. Many people just don't believe that in engineering terms this is even possible. There is also, also the risk that the rail element fails altogether, as it did in Alconbury, where the loop could not be made to work for engineering reasons. So if the rail element fails, residents are worried that this site will simply become a giant lorry depot, with the implications for the infrastructure being environmentally damaging and creating congestion on the main road transport artery of the M1. So my third question for the government. When will the government secure and publish firm and detailed plans from Network Rail about how they will manage the build and the operation of new freight carriages without disruption to passengers? And will the government demand those plans from Network Rail and ensure that those plans are published before any works on the site can progress? And my fourth question, will the government confirm that if the rail element does fail and can't be built, as it did in Alconbury, that this site will not be able to operate simply as a giant lorry depot. Then there's the impact on roads and local village communities. Even under these existing plans, there will be additional lorry traffic on already busy roads. These terminals work on tight collection and delivery slots. Meeting these slots and the driver's hours requirements will see many of these lorries parked up locally so they can meet their slot. We already have issues with the smaller London Coney Riverside distribution hub, where drivers park overnight in laybys, using the roadside hedges and woodland as a toilet. And local residents can only see this getting worse. So what assessment has the government actually made of the impact of drivers, for example, parking overnight in laybys and using the roadside hedges as a toilet? What impact and assessment has the government made on the village communities in my constituency? Some have argued that this local impact could be countered by having a new M25 exit for the rail freight to avoid some of the traffic impacts on local roads. But this has already been vetoed by Highways England. And then there's the impact of Brexit and the government's new Freeports policy. The government says it will announce the location of up to 10 post-Brexit Freeports by the end of this year so they can begin operating in 2021. My sixth question. In light of the government's plan for free ports, do the previous freight distribution routes still apply? Or will the proposed free ports make this rail freight interchange redundant? We also need to explore 
the effect of the London Gateway container terminal that has opened on the Thames since this rail freight was first proposed. This will have altered the freight distribution networks in the South East. Has it changed the need for a terminal in St Albans? Indeed, the plans for Halbury Park have been dropped because of this. And the Secretary of State, in his own words, said that the London Gateway site, developed since the rail freight interchange in Halbury Park was first identified, has the potential to provide an alternative development option for the provision of a rail freight interchange to serve the same part of London and the South East as the appeals proposal. So in light of the finding in relation to a rail freight interchange at Halbury Park, can the Minister confirm what assessment has been made or will be made of whether the London Gateway might now also provide alternative freight capacity for the proposed strategic rail freight interchange at the former Radler Aerodrome site in my constituency? Madam Deputy Speaker, for 12 years, local residents, local campaign groups strife stop the rail freight interchange. The St Albans Civic Society, Hertfordshire MPs of different political persuasions and campaigners of all political parties and none have fought to stop this monstrosity. And that's even without thousands of Thameslink and East, Midland, uh, East Midlands commuters getting up in arms. A government-imposed strategic rail freight interchange in Park Street would occupy 490 football pitches of Greenbelt. As a result, this land can't be protected as Greenbelt, it can't be used for housing, and it's unlikely to even work as a railway interchange, leaving it just to become a massive lorry park. A rail freight interchange would bring untold disruption to our village life and road and rail networks. It would require massive engineering in Thameslink tunnels to the south, permanently disrupt commuter lines, and clog village roads with parked-up lorries. Current government policy holds this piece of land hostage. Madam Deputy Speaker, I'm calling on the government tonight to stop the rail freight and let local people decide how they want to use their land. Thank you.